Welcome to the 2022 Baseball Town Charities Phillies Winter Tour, presented by Liebensberger Funeral Homes. Since its inception in 2002, Baseball Town at Charities has been investing in the future of baseball, raising several million dollars to build facilities and fund programs in and around Reading. It started with the construction of Gordon Hudak Stadium at Lowers Park, a baseball palace for inner city boys and girls of the Baseball Town Junior RBI League. It continued with the renovation of Reading's historic Bear Park, and then expanded beyond the city limits to build the Savage 61 Dream Field, a ballpark specially designed for those with physical and cognitive challenges. In addition to financially supporting the leagues that utilize these facilities, Baseball Town at Charities recently started the Rip It For Life program, which provides free lessons, batting cage time, and invaluable guidance about life to players who lack the financial ability to pursue playing at a higher level. We invite you to celebrate our national pastime while preserving its future by supporting Baseball Town Charities. Please visit BaseballTown.org to donate today. Hi, Fight and Field fans. This is radio broadcaster Emily Messina with a special guest on with me for the Baseball Town Charities Reading Phillies Winter Tour. It is the one and only Michael Jack Schmidt. Mike, how are you? Hi, Emily. Uh, doing wonderful. Uh, um, I've been, uh, other, other than uh, rehabbing a rotator cuff surgery <laughs> that I had about uh, nine weeks ago, everything else is good. Uh, uh, weather in Florida has been beautiful. Um, so if you have any uh, uh, connection with Philly spring training or anything like that, uh, you should be looking forward to some great weather down here. But life's good. Appreciate it. Wow, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it has been cold here, and there's snow on the ground of the ballpark. So definitely uh, jealous about your sunny Florida. What do you um, What do you like to do in your free time now? Do you do you play a lot of golf? Go fishing down there? Well, no. <clears throat> Norm- normally, I would, Emily. Um, uh, like I said, I, I had surgery a couple of months ago on my right shoulder, so it's been uh, um, almost, you know, concentrating totally on rehabbing that shoulder. Um, <clears throat> I was operating with one arm for a while, and now I'm back to, you know, almost normal. I still can't. Uh, do some of the things I'd like to do. I can do some putting and chipping on the golf course, but uh, that's about it for me. Uh, Otherwise, it's been, uh, um, you know, family and uh, calendar stuff and doctor's appointments and stuff like that. I uh, have uh, a lot of days with nothing to do, and then like a half hour into those days, I end up with a full day. So, uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, but but life is good, and... um, uh, I'm very blessed. Well, I'm glad to hear that and hope your rehab goes well for you and you got both arms good to go sometimes. <laughs> will you be at spring training uh, this year at all? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, mid-March, uh, I'll be attending the, uh, the camp for about four days. Nothing really uh, baseball-related in, you know, in terms of coaching, uh, putting the uniform on or anything like that. I do some uh, sponsorship work, uh, some marketing work, some as- ambassadorial stuff uh, for the club uh, for uh, a four-day weekend uh, while, while we're there. It's generally uh, one of the weekends when the Philly sponsors are in attendance in spring training and uh, play a little golf one day and uh, attend a couple of dinners. And uh, a lot of people that I normally spend time with during the season <clears throat> up in uh, Philadelphia that uh, that I also do those things with and have done them for about the last, uh, I think, 10 years. I've gotten to know a lot of the Philly sponsors and season ticket holders over that time, and uh, uh, it, it's been a good uh, good marriage for me and the club. Well, that's awesome. It sounds like it'll be busy, but it'll be uh, lots of fun down there at spring training. Uh, well, yeah, you, you know, spring training's always always a great time for everybody, a lot of optimism and uh um, you know, it's good weather for a lot of people that haven't been in Florida, you know, when you go to spring training. I used to love to go to spring training uh, when I was a player because I was coming out of cold Philadelphia and going <laughs> to Clearwater, Florida. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, always look forward to that. Yeah, we definitely do here as well. 
Um, and you've been with the Phillies for forever. You had an 18-year career as their franchise player. Not a lot of players can say that they've stuck around with the same organization and now, um, even after your retirement, still working with them. Um, what's that been like for you? Yeah, that's special. <clears throat> There's uh, uh, yeah, a handful of players that I know from my era um, that uh, were – Lifers with a particular organization. Um, you know, George Brett played for the Royals his whole career. Uh, Johnny Bench played for the Reds his whole career. Um, and, and, you know, there, there's a lot more, obviously. Brooks Robinson just comes to mind. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, players, I guess you could say we're lucky enough to do that. Uh, most, most of them prior, pre-free agency. Um, but... Uh, it, you know, it, it's a great thing uh, because you get to, you know, the, you get to you know the organization, the people. You you make a lot of friends. I mean, even now, uh, I'm still I'm still making new friends uh, in the organization. Uh, geez, some of my really good friends now are people that work in the uh, cafeteria in the, in the media, <laughs> you know, in the media cafeteria upstairs, and. Uh, um, I've gotten to know a lot of people I would have never gotten to know if I hadn't stayed uh in in the Phillies organization my whole my whole baseball life and uh I hope that that will continue uh for as long as uh I'm able to fly from you know wherever I am to Philadelphia um and I, I think all the guys uh that played for one organization their whole career would say the same thing about uh, about that. That it's it's done nothing for but good for the for them in their uh, um, professional lives. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Everybody that I've met that was a former Philly has been great to talk to. You played 2,404 games with the team. Do you ever think anyone will catch you? I uh, would doubt it. Uh, I, I guess uh, I don't know. Uh, Raw, uh, Jimmy Rollins. Uh, let's see. I don't know where he would be on that list. Uh, am I well, number one on that right. list now? You're you're number one still. He was close. He's right below you. But I think, you know, it, it has to probably come the way you did up through the system, and then. Yes. The yes. The yes. Forever. So so the answer to your question is uh, the way we know how, uh, how the game is set up today with uh, the money and the free agency and all that kind of stuff. It's highly unlikely that. Uh, that anyone will surpass that number. Yeah, I think it, it'll be a long time before we see that again. Uh, but you came up all the way through the system, and you actually began your career where I am right now in Reading. Do you remember getting your start there? <clears throat> Without question, I sure do. Um, it was uh, in 1971, uh, following, following being drafted by the Phillies in, in June of 1971, um, I try to shorten shorten this story as much as I can, but I remember as part of my uh, agreement to sign with the Phillies, I was invited to Philadelphia uh, to take batting practice for a couple of uh, games on, on that particular weekend, wear the uniform, the big league uniform, dress in the major league locker room, um, experience veteran stadium was brand new at the time, and uh, having that experience was uh, – was a big thrill for me. I, you know, I went from a college uniform into a major league uniform uh, overnight. And uh, Monday of that weekend uh, was the Reading Phillies exhibition game that they used to have annually. Mm-hmm. And Larry Boa, uh, I was the shortstop at the time, and Larry Boa got ill and was una- uh, unable to play in that game. So they asked me if I'd like to go play. And <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> and, and my gosh. Um, again, uh, went from a, uh, uh, college uniform, um, into a major league game. <laughs> I mean, obviously it wasn't a, it wasn't a game, uh, a real live game, but it was an exhibition game and the, <clears throat> and the, uh, the regular Phillies lineup was all around me. Uh, I was hitting eighth in the batting order, but, uh, you know, I had all the, all the players that play on a regular basis with the exception of Larry Boa, uh, all around me. So. Um, man, was I, uh, on a, on a big time high, uh, having the ability to do that. So what happened was, uh, uh, late in the game, 
uh, I hit a home run to win the ball game. Wow. And yeah, uh, amazing um, how things happen in life. But uh, that one swing, that one home run, uh, uh, I guess kind of kind of set up uh, my trip through the minor leagues with the Phillies. I mean, they had plans to send me to uh, a lower uh, a lower league. You know, Reading being a double A league, but uh, to a league in an A league, I believe in Spartanburg, um, and. It saved me who knows how many minor league years, that one swing of the bat at Reading. So they just let me stay at Reading. <clears throat> you know, they just let me stay right there and start my career in double A. Now, I wasn't quite, I wasn't, say, experienced enough to, hmm. you know, to be any kind of a star player at that time because I was seeing some pitching that was quite difficult for me. But uh, I did the best I could, uh, played shortstop the rest of that year, and, um after my game, uh, they had uh, started Bob Boone as catcher, who was originally the third baseman. When I say originally, prior, starting that season, he played third base for Reading, and so he they wanted him to experience being a catcher. So he went to catcher, and uh, I stayed at short, but uh, it started Bob Boone's career as a catcher as well at the same time. So I played a half a year in Reading, and uh, that's how it all happened. Um, I, I kind of remember the bus trips and the league, the Eastern League that uh, we played in, and uh, um, the half a year experience in Reading's what started my career. Wow, that sounds like uh, yeah, a heck of a career and a legendary year. And I heard a rumor, and you could tell me if this is true or not, that when you first signed with the Phillies, you bought a yellow 1971 <laughs> Corvette Stingray, and you drove it here to America's Classic Ballpark? I sure yeah. did, now. <laughs> oh, how uh, um, oh how rumors fly around. Isn't that funny? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, yeah, I'll never forget it. It was, uh, I know, right where I went to buy it, and uh, bought it right off the showroom floor, and... Uh, um uh, it was a very very special time now i'm i that car um was uh went by today's standards for sure uh ridiculously cheap now back then the, paying for that car wasn't cheap it was pretty high price back then but i think it was like seven thousand dollars or something like that for a car that's over a hundred you know like eighty seventy eighty thousand dollars nowadays and um so yeah uh I treated myself to a little uh, bonus gift. <laughs> yeah, as you deserve. That's incredible. Must have felt on top of the world. Now, now my teammates at the time uh, kind of let me know it. Uh, the, you know, the, co <laughs> the college uh, phenom who drove up in a yellow Corvette, you know, and uh, they didn't let me uh, off the hook on that one. You know what's funny? That still happens today. When the guys drive up in these tricked-out Jeeps, or big oh, yeah. trucks, they still may still get joked around for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bonuses nowadays are a little bit different than they were when I played. But yeah, you know, I, I think I think uh, when when the young guys come into a little bit of money like that, they uh, you know they make sure mom had mom and dad have a nice home and uh, make sure they have a nice car, right? Spreading the wealth there a little bit. Um, and going back to what you had said about hitting your first home run there in the exhibition game um out of all 548 you hit sounds like you remember that one pretty well are there oh, yeah. any one that you remember more than that well if you start ranking them in terms of important it's really hard not to put that right there real close to the top because it kind of set the tone for my career um i mean who knows if that home run hadn't happened um how it would have changed my career, you know, timing is everything. And, um, I have, would have had to spend another year in the minor leagues. I would have had to have gone to another, you know, a smaller town somewhere and just would have been a whole, a whole different experience. Uh, you know, we, we, we hope that we can make the best of breaks when we get them. And, you know, my, my career was, was full of, uh, great timing moments uh things that happened at the right time for me and uh, i think most of them i made the best of but if you want to rank home runs that home run is surely um 
when you start comparing them to home runs in the World Series or home runs, uh, you know, the the 500th and the last home run and things, the first home run and, and, and all of that, I mean, how do you rank one over the other? Um, I guess if I had to rank my number one home run, if I had to rank my home runs, the number one home run I ever hit was the one that put us into uh, – uh, into the postseason in 1980 up in Montreal when we were we had to win two out of three games to get to the postseason in 1980 and uh, uh, both games in both games I hit a home run to win the game so those probably were my two most important home runs but my home run to, uh, to get my career started in Reading that's right there at the top as well and it's crazy how things like that can change the trajectory of everything. And in that 1980 series, you went on to be, you know, the NL MVP, the World Series MVP, and bring home the first championship to Philadelphia. I can't imagine what that must have felt like for you. <laughs> it was pretty neat, to tell you the truth, because we had failed uh, the other three times we were in the postseason. Um, and in, after failing three times, uh, you know, failing a fourth time, would have been catastrophic for us young guys in Philadelphia. I mean, almost like uh, when when you really want to shine as a player is when, you know, the chips are all on the line. Uh, you know, the postseason, my postseason um, career statistic stat line is not that great. <laughs> But, Except when uh, it mattered I, there in 1980. Well, I, I know, but I mean, uh, in, in the other postseason games that I played prior to that, I, they weren't uh, they weren't stand out by any means. And uh, we, you know, we got beat twice by the Dodgers and once by the Reds uh, there in the middle 70s. And now we were um, we got into the postseason in 1980. And uh, but, you know, the difference in the team really was that we had Pete Rose on the team and couple of new faces that were really young good young players coming off the bench and uh uh we, they called us a team that wouldn't die and um golly uh if we got out of that postseason series in houston um we were really the team that wouldn't die that's incredible it sounds like you remember it so well do you, do you still have the ring oh absolutely absolutely uh it's in well, I don't have it on my finger, but I have it in a safe in my uh, bedroom closet. Yeah, definitely have to keep that safe. And then well, one final thing to wrap it up, of course, couldn't would be in remiss if I didn't mention your first-year selection into the Hall of Fame. Um, obviously, World Series is like the pinnacle of the career, but did it feel nice to kind of cap it off with the Hall oh. of Fame recognition, or was the World Series really it? Yeah, Emily, for sure it did. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, it's it's very hard to rank um, those two things in, in a particular order. Uh, I, I have to, I'd have to say, the accomplishment in 1980 um, of of the team uh, would be impossible to top. You know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. uh, an individual honor like uh, an MVP or you know even. You know, or what you're asking me about the Hall of Fame uh, uh, induction, yeah, that's big time stuff there. But no, nothing will ever top the memories I have from the 1980 team when we uh, when we won the World Championship. I mean, it just that whole that whole journey from uh, the home run that I told you about in Montreal, um, through Houston, through Kansas City, through the parade in Philadelphia, and 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 of course, the, the great individual honors that came along with that. Nothing will ever top the 1980 series or the 1980 team uh, and that experience in my mind. So, uh, yes, the Hall of Fame was <laughs> absolutely amazing, and, and it will always be the rest of my life, of course. But uh, I'll never, I'll never rank anything above the 1980 season. Yeah, I can imagine with the parade in Philadelphia, that was incredible, and then. Um, you know, have your team career great with the World Series and then your individual career with the Hall of Fame must have been a um, really nice thing to end your career with. So that's all the questions I have for you today. Is there anything else you want to add here? No, I just uh, <clears throat> wish you guys uh, 
a wonderful finish to the winter time up there and um uh, enjoy any trips you might take to Florida and uh wish the Reading Phillies great luck this year and uh keep developing those players down there because as you saw with last year and a couple years prior um uh, we were always in need of good young players to come up <laughs> in Philadelphia um you know I think maybe that's been a little bit of a sore spot over the last two or three years is uh you know the the we get we get some really good players but uh when I compare the current day to uh back in the, say the 1980 season I mean we we had uh experienced guys playing on the bench that came off the bench and did the job and uh so develop us a few of those kind of guys this year all right all right, sounds good. Thank you so much. We'll have to get you back up to Reading sometime soon, too. All right, Emily, Indiana. appreciate it. All right, you have a great day. You too. Thank you, Mike. After losing a loved one, families often wonder what next. You'll find the answer at Leibensberger Funeral Homes. Everyone who walks through our doors is treated with respect and compassion. We take the time to learn about your loved one and celebrate their life with a service that reflects who they really were. Offering two locations, ample parking, and a spacious chapel and vestibule. Let our family help your family find peace at Leibensberger Funeral Homes. Thank you for watching the 2022 Baseball Town Charities Phillies Winter Tour, presented by Leibensberger Funeral Homes. Special thanks also to M&T Bank for their continued support of Baseball Town Charities.